Now let me ask a question related to what we have discussed. We suppose we have a y-n sequence, and this y-n sequence is passed through a sequence to impulse train, and the output is y-s of t, and y-s of t is related to y-n of t. This it convert each sample to an impulse, and this is y-s of t. Now. We pass y s of t through this ideal reconstruction filter. We get y r of t. Then how is y r of t related to y t in the frequency domain? How can we answer such a question? Well, there are two steps here, right? One is sequence impulse train, and one is filtering by h r and sequence to impulse train. Let's recall the result. That we had earlier, when a sequence and an impulse train are related like this, we know how y s j omega and y e j omega are related, right? E j omega t. This is the Fourier transform of the sequence of the impulse train, and this is the Fourier transform of the discrete time sequence y n. So that's how they are related. If this is the Fourier transform of y, then y s is simply a frequency scaled version of y e j omega, y s j omega, a frequency scaled version. This become pi over t and minus pi over t, and the height remain the same. Y s will be Y e j omega is periodic with a period of two pi, and Y s j omega would be periodic with a period two pi over t. And continue on on the other side as well. Now this Y s is gonna be passed through h r, and what does h r do? H r will extract the part of Y s in this frequency range. Okay, so. The reconstruction filter will extract precisely this part and uh, multiply it with t. So now, what can we say about y r? Will simply be the part of y s for omega. Let's be two pi over t. It's exactly the same as t times y s j omega. For this range, and this is precisely t times y e j omega t. This is how y r and the Fourier transform of the sequence y n is related. Usually, we combine these two blocks together, and we call it discrete time to continuous time converter, and we put a t at the bottom. To indicate how the conversion is done, y input is a discrete time sequence, and the output is a continuous time signal. Having covered both C to D and D to C converter, now we are ready to talk about discrete time processing of continuous time signals. Oftentimes, with a continuous time signal, we would like to pass it through a filter, or we would like to process it, but we would like to do it. In using computers, so what we do is we first pass it through a C to D converter to convert it to a discrete time sequence, and then we do processing here. We pass it through a digital a discrete time filter H C. The output Y n is then converted back to a continuous time signal. So there are two questions that we would like to answer here. First, how is Y R of T related to X C? And、um, Having answered this question, if we have a continuous time signal, we convert it to discrete time, we process it, and then we convert it back to continuous time. How is the resulting continuous time signal at the output related to the input continuous time signal? So that's the first question that we would like to answer here. Secondly, we have a desired continuous time system. Okay. Because it's x c t is the signal that we would like to process, we would like to pass through some kind of a continuous time filter. But now we would like to do it this way. We would like to 
do all the computation in the discrete time, how can we design this HZ so that we have the overall system is the desired continuous time system? Suppose there's no aliasing. We know how Xej omega is related to Xc. It's so 1 over t, Xej omega over t for omega in a two-part period. And we know how y is related to x, right? Because it's a discrete time LTI filter. So it's simply the product of the two. Um, but we also know how yr is related to y. It's t times y e j omega t. All right. So now we just need to plug in how y is related to x, and how x is related to xc, and then we are done. So using y is simply the product of the two, right? So we plug in, we only need to replace small omega by big omega t, and that's it. We replace small omega by big omega t, and then again, small omega by big omega t, and we also have how x, and we also know how x is related to xc. You can simply obtain it by this relation. Now in the place of small omega, we need to put down big omega t. So that would be 1 over t, and then xc j omega t, and there's still a t at the bottom. We are almost done. This is H E J omega T and then X C J omega for omega in the range pi over T. You can see here this is for omega in the range pi over T. So what have we gotten so far? The output Fourier transform is equal to X C J omega and there's this H thing here. It's the product of these two in this frequency range. What kind of equation is this? What is it telling us? What kind of system is this? Is it LTI? Is this, is this an LTI system? So is this an LTI system? This is how they are related in frequency, right? And this system has a continuous time input, a continuous time input, and a continuous time output from here to here, this system has a continuous time input, continuous time output, and that's how input and output are related. So would this be an LTI system? Yes, indeed, it is. It's a um, LTI system. What kind of LTI system is it? It's equivalent to a system with continuous time input, continuous time output, and um, it's an LTI system. And the LTI system has a Fourier transform that is equal to H E J omega t when omega is smaller or equal to pi over t and it's zero otherwise. Now we can answer the second question. Given a desired continuous time system, let's say the continuous time system is G J omega. How do design H. Because we are given a desired continuous time g, j, omega, so we would like to have the effective overall system to be equal to g. How can we choose h? We can use this expression to choose h, right? We can use this expression to choose h. This one should now be g, and we can work backward to get h. H should be, how is H related to G? It should be G, J, omega, over T. But of course, this G has to be band-limited filter, that is band-limited to this frequency range to start with. And this is for omega, omega, in a 2 pi period. Well, you may also want to think about how this Hn related to g of t, how they are related, because this expression looks very, very familiar, right? So how are they related in the time domain? 